Hello, John Vance, Josh Bloom. Welcome to the B Shifter podcast. Today, we're going to feature some audio, a couple of uh, different incidents we're going to take you to. One's a kitchen fire, one's a residential fire with a defensive shift. But uh, first, just want to check in with Josh. How are you doing today, Josh? I'm fantastic, John. Thanks for asking. It's uh, I'm in Cincinnati, and it's going to be 70 degrees and sunny today. So that's uh, I hope winter is behind us. And just to give people some context, we are recording this on April 8th. So uh, if you're listening to it this week, um, I think the eclipse is going on this week, isn't it? Uh, it's, oh, yeah. I, the governor I, I, declared a state of emergency and traffic everywhere and stay off the road. And yeah, animal, animals are going to be running wild everywhere. So this Stay might away. be our last podcast, you know, if, if, if everything comes crashing to a halt, right? Well, I seen something this morning. Stay away from uh, raccoons and squirrels in the area because they will <laughs> act, act crazy. That's funny. <laughs> That's great. Hey, uh, we, we, uh, we're, we're pretty excited because this week uh, or next week at this time, we'll be packing up to go to Indianapolis. We'll be at FDIC. Uh, we have a booth there. We'll be there uh, Wednesday through Saturday. We want to invite everyone to come by, see us, ask questions. That is if we make it through the eclipse. Ask questions. We've got uh, our FAFO t-shirts. So if you want to join the fire department uh, coalition or firefighters against destructive decisions, you can do that with us. We're going to be in booth 12039 in the Hoosier corridor between doors I and J. Uh, so we're out in the main kind of hallway area. Uh, we, we always have a great time talking to the blue card folks out there, but especially this year, you know, we, we get a lot of people that don't understand what blue card is. So if you've got that chief from your department, a decision maker in your department that you want to send our way to talk a little bit about blue card and uh, maybe get some of the misconceptions uh, out of the way, we would invite you to do that as well. We've got a big, big staff there this year. So, uh, Chris Stewart's going to join us. Grant Light's always there with us. Eric Phillips going to be there. Uh, and then, you know, a few others. So, uh, yeah, come hang out. Uh, might even throw some, some live short little, uh, podcast snippets out there. Like we did at the uh, I chiefs, maybe, um, get some recordings, maybe whatever. So yeah, stop by chat with us, questions, answers, ideas, come on by. Love to see you. We continue to refine our online program, um, which has been the case since day one. Uh, back in October, we relaunched the website and we continue to make updates. I know in the last couple of weeks, we had a, a couple of huge updates made to that in terms of the dashboard and being able to see expiration dates. Where are we at right now, Josh, on on everything with the B-Shifter site and uh, the, the blue card on learning platform? Yeah, so... We're, we're never going to be finished with it because we're going to live in the state of constantly fixing ourselves. And, you know, fixing yourself doesn't necessarily mean it's broke. It really just means that you can do better. So, um, again, our priority was getting the learning management system back up first. And that that was that was back up right away uh, within a few days of when we switched over. And then, you know, now we're working on the records management piece of it uh, just recently. Um, we got the, the student dashboard uh, in the department roster, um, tons of updates and uh, improvements based off of input from all of you, the customer that use that system to help uh, refine uh, how the roster and building rosters and uh, managing your personnel so that they can maintain certification. Uh, we know your time's valuable. So uh, that was a big piece of it, trying to just streamline how an instructor, you know, builds a roster, how fast um, they can find data uh, and, and really some reports. So uh, some some quick reports that can be run that kind of gives you an overview of where are your students? What do they need to do? Um, what, what have they done um, when renewals are coming up? All of that. So uh, every week we continue to improve upon um, the current system. If you have any suggestions, too, we are open to, to hearing from you all the time. So Josh's email's right there. My email's right here. So feel free to, to send an email. Let us know uh, any thoughts you have or some things that you might think that we need 
within the system and and we'd be uh, happy to look at it because we are always fixing ourselves like Josh said. And then uh, finally, before we get into the, the meat of the podcast, we continue to sign people up with early bird pricing for the Blue Cart Hazard Zone Conference, September 30th through October 4th in Sharonville, Ohio, right outside of Cincinnati. If you went to the conference this last year, over 500 people attended. You know what a great learning and networking event that was. We have even a bigger conference this year. We have more instructors, more classes. And then we added some pre-conference classes, too, including a Mayday workshop. The Mayday workshop is filling fast. I think right now we have 10 or 11 seats available for that one left. Um, And you could come out to Cincinnati, spend the week with us, uh, and get a lot of learning in and still take advantage of that early bird pricing. Yeah, $715 if if you do the workshop, right? So two days of Mayday workshop two days of a conference with 22 different um, presenters, uh, chief lead from FDNY, um, uh, just just a list of folks that, you know, we connect with, Dan from FSRI, uh, NFSA, you know, our partner, Shane Ray, and uh, updates on sprinkler systems. Um, yeah, so there was 40 seats available in that Mayday workshop. We're still six months away, and I think there is like 10 or 11 seats left in that. And anybody who signs up gets a free online account that's transferable. So even if you're already certified, uh, you can transfer that online account to somebody else. So uh, if you're just coming to the two-day component, you know, you're going to pay 415 to come to the conference and you would pay 385 for a, for an online account. So, you know, the difference of $30 and I get an online account and come to a two-day conference that's, you know, packed full of information and presenters. And we added capacity compared to last year, but at some point we will fill up. At some point, the hotel blocks will be sold off. So we want to encourage everyone to sign up early, get your early bird registration. And we'd hate to have somebody who really wanted to do this try to get in at the last minute and you can't. So uh, get on to the website. It's hazardzonebc.com. And that information in the show notes, as always. You can follow that link and get registered. Bring your department. Uh, you know, I, I always bring up the the chief that told me he can send five people to this conference for what it costs him to send one person to another conference. So you, you get a lot of uh, value for your training dollar and uh, a lot of learning, a lot of networking, and it's a really great event for not only blue card users but potential blue card users out there people who just care about fire command and uh, want to learn best practices and what's going on as far as the cutting edge of incident command goes so today we are going to dive into some audio it's been a little bit since we've done some audio and uh, we're going to feature a department today in florida hernando county Tell us a little bit about this department, Josh, and uh, the department profile, because this is the first time that we've featured them. And I believe they're a newer blue card department, aren't they? Yeah, so they are a newer blue card department. So Hernando County is on the uh, Gulf Coast towards the uh, closer to the panhandle um, above uh, two or three counties above Tampa. Um They've been doing blue card for about nine months. Um, they got 14 stations now, three battalion chiefs a day, a little over 300 personnel. Um, and their partners to their south, um, Pasco County, have been online doing blue card for years. And then Polk County, just south of them, has been doing blue card for years. And then uh, we're starting to we're starting to see. Um, some other growth in and around um, that Pasco Polk County area connecting back over towards, uh, you know, Orange County. And then when you get back over the Orange County side, Brevard County, you know, run all, running all the way up and down the coast, all the way down to Miami Dade, that's been, you know, using the system for over 10 years. So um, an interesting thing with the Hernando County, when the chief went there, uh, one of the things that, that, that he was rolling out and pushing out was, that they, they standardize incident command and deployment. So uh, he laid out some really defined expectations of what they were going to do with blue card. And just like any training, once you turn it on, doesn't mean you're going to have a hundred percent performance in the field. You're probably never going to have a hundred percent performance, but that's what you're always striving for. Again, just like uh, command function seven, right? We're always evaluating what we're doing, trying to do it 
better, even if it, even if we nailed it, right? We, we can always improve. And that's how, that's how, uh, that's how we continue to do better. So I think a key thing was that, that the chief rolling out some expectations and then, you know, having feedback from the people who use the system of, of what does this really look like? And then really, once some folks started going through it, having that conversation of uh, we're going to use the system and use all of the system because, you know, far too often people try to uh, buy into whatever it is um, and they only want to use part of it. And it's like, well, you're not going to get peak performance if you just piecemeal things together because, you know, most systems are designed to work together, all of the pieces, not just uh, I'm going to try to plug in one part of it. So uh, as we listen to these these audio today, I mean, you can hear that they, they've standardized a lot of things in a very short period of time. You can understand exactly what's going on, um, their size up and follow up and uh, can report communications is very clear and defined and organized. Um, so, yeah, let's let's just hear it for ourselves. Battalion Chief 1, Battalion Chief 2, Station 1, Engine 2, Engine 5, Rescue 5, Switch 2 and Respond on Fire 2 to 7454 Blackhawk Trail, reference to a residential fire. Engine 2, on 2. Responding on 2. Responding. All units, I show you responding on Fire 2, 7454 Blackhawk Trail, reference to a residential fire. Caller advised the sister was making chicken and the oil on the stove caught fire. There are flames at this time. She called in by a minor, two minors on the property, a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old. Your closest hydrant is going to be just east of this address on Black Hawk Trail. All units on fire to be advised the... Juvenile male is 15 years old. Keeps trying to go back inside the residence to grab his Xbox. He is not listening to the operator. Just stay outside. Engine one. Engine one. Engine one, Hernando. Engine one. Who's part two? Engine four, Hernando on two. Engine one, repeat. Who's first two? Engine. Engine two. Engine two, Hernando. Engine two. On the small single story residential structure with smoke showing from the alpha side. This will be a working fire. Engine two will be stretching a handline to the alpha side for fire control and primary search. Continue the bounty alarm and we'll be establishing command. Engine two is command working fire. Fire from the correction smoke from the alpha side, single story residential. Battalion one, Hernando. Go ahead. On scene. Copy on scene. Battalion one to command. Go ahead. I understand that you have a handline through Alpha for fire control primary search. If that's correct, give me a can. That is correct. Completing 360, no other hazards noted. We're going to remain in the office of strategy, and accountability is going to be on the Alpha side, Engine 2. Battalion 1 copy. 360 complete, no additional hazards noted. Accountability is going to be on Engine 2 Alpha. Battalion 1 to Hernando. Good. Assuming Blackhawk command, continue the balance of the alarm, remaining in the offensive strategy. Copy. Battalion 1, Blackhawk command, continue offensive strategy. Command. Command engine 2, go ahead. We have a status team. Fire is out. Thank you for extension. The primary search is complete. No doubt. No doubt. Command copy. Fires out. Checking for extension. Continuing primary search. Copy. We'll have ventilation set up momentarily. Engine five. Rescue five. Level one. Command engine five. Engine five, go command. Spot your apparatus be behind engine two. Supply engine two. 
and go on deck Alpha. Engine 5 copy, spotter apparatus behind engine 2. Set up a water supply, then go on deck Alpha. Chief 1, command level 1. Command engine 5. Engine 5, go. Have rescue 5 attached to you. Copy, rescue 5, you copy. Engine 1, level 1. Command engine 1. Engine 1. Spot your apparatus out of the way and go on deck Alpha. Copy, spot out of the way, go on deck Alpha. Rescue 1 on deck. Uh, rescue 1, staging, level 1. Command rescue 1. Rescue 1, go. Spot your apparatus out of the way instead of rehab and medical on the west side of the scene. Uh, rescue 1, copy, set up uh, rehab west side of the scene. Command engine 5. Engine 5, we arrived at Alpha. Copy, set up positive pressure ventilation through Alpha. Copy. Chief 1, command, you want me to take Alpha? Command to Chief 1, that's affirmative. Go ahead and uh, be Alpha Sector Boss. You have Engine 2, Engine 5, with Rescue 5 attached to Engine 5. Engine 1 momentarily reporting to Alpha, and you have Rescue 1 setting up rehab. Alpha Command, I got Engine 2 working inside. Five's on deck, Alpha. What else do I got? Command back to Alpha, you have Engine 1 reporting to on deck Alpha. You have Rescue 5 attached to Engine 5, and you have Rescue 1 setting up rehab. Alpha to Engine 2. Engine 2, Alpha. Alpha, go. Yeah, so on this one, John, you know, starting with the dispatcher, you know, their dispatch giving them some information. Um, I think one of the values that makes it a little easier with working with dispatch is when they work for the fire department. So um, in this case, I, they work hand in hand. Um, I mean, dispatch obviously works with the fire department, but like uh, when they can work with each other, but they can also have some defined direction from the fire chief that that's also good so you know on some of their audio we hear uh, dispatch telling them where the closest hydrants are um, who might be first due other information like that so that's that's another one of those like almost like air traffic control pieces how can the dispatcher help the companies responding so i mean on this one you know good information there um uh, yeah, like the kid the kid trying to go back inside that's definitely yeah. something you want to know about as as you're responding and coming into something like that is if if not everyone has evacuated and there are people not following the pre-arrival instructions that's really good to know as the company's coming in absolutely yeah um and then engine two engine two pulls up right a really good size up so you know people always say well how, how do they get that to roll out like that well it's practice right the, the chief rolled out some expectations He's training everybody, making, he's not, but he's making sure that everybody on the fire department's trained. And then he's reinforcing, you know, good behavior and helping to correct, you know, uh, areas that could be improved. So, you know, excellent size up here, painting a good picture of what's going on, as Chief Renacini, you know, used to say, uh, maybe one of the most important communications on the fire ground, right? Like it, it just sets the stage for what is going on. It tells everybody else it's en route. Um, what it might look like uh, in their system. The battalion chief pulled up right behind engine two. So they hadn't gotten a 360 yet. And 
you know, that command transfer was super simple because, you know, basically just gave a rundown of what the battalion had heard en route, um, but took took command, you know, right from the get go, which, you know, in our system, that puts it back to the, the task level can do task level work. And now you have a strategic IC in there that's doing strategic and tactical level decision making. So the company officer can get back to focus on the work, right? Uh, and then still comes back with the follow up report, you know, to command that the 360 is complete, uh, what was found, uh, and, and then, you know, what they were continuing to do. So, I mean, that, that was all, that was all good communications from the very front end. And, you know, people say, oh, it takes too long. And it's like, well, the information that you gain in that 12 to 14 seconds is, is really priceless because you can still have your firefighters, you know, deploying and doing things while you're still gathering information and letting everybody else know what's going on so that we're all on the same page operating on the same incident action plan. So uh, soon thereafter, engine two ends up inside. So engine two keys up to command um, and, and it's given a status change, really was just given a report of a, a the fires been knocked down uh, and that they haven't all clear and said, you know, no needs initially. And on, on that, I just want to talk briefly about Engine 2's communications from inside was very clear. So one thing we talk about is uh, the, the strategic IC has to be listening, right? One of the big jobs of the strategic IC is active listening. So, you know, they're in their car, they're wearing a headset, they can hear the communications. And on this case, as we're listening to it on here, we're not even there. And you could, you could, you could make out exactly what Engine Two's communications was, and, and that doesn't happen by accident either. Because majority of radio fire ground traffic we hear with people wearing their mask is not good. You know, it, it repeats your traffic. You know, it would garble whatever, and it's because oftentimes they're not holding their mic in the right place. They're trying to use some Bluetooth technology that maybe they're not familiar with. Um, they're just bothered because they don't want to talk on the radio. They just want to do work. I mean, who knows, right? But in this case, I, I just want to bring it out that, you know, that engine two traffic from inside on air, it, it was, it was excellent. It was clear. Um, and, and that's important because that also helps drive down radio traffic. <clears throat> so uh, they, they keep engine two had keyed back up and said, uh, we actually need uh a company to assist us with checking for extension. Um, so that, that next transmission was to engine five. So we talk about, you know, task location and objective. The IC gives a great short task location objective, to engine five, and then they're following the order model. Engine five uh, breaks it down, makes it a little bit shorter, but engine five repeats, um, not verbatim, but uh, gets the message back to command that they're clear on the assignment. We're going to park out of the way, get a water supply to engine two, pull a backup line off of engine two. <clears throat> so, the, you know, strategic IC is doing strategic level accountability, checking that box. This is where I'm at, drawing out their incident action plan. Um, and then, you know, some things changed. Uh, by the time engine five got into place, they said that they were there in alpha. And then, then I guess got a reassignment to, you know, set up a positive pressure fan at the front door. So, you know, sometimes we hear, you know, if I don't have something for somebody to do, what do I do with them? Well, in this case, uh, they were setting it up um, to support the work of, of that first company inside engine two. So they, they were, they didn't, they wanted to get a company on deck. They wanted to get a backup line into place. They got a water supply. So all those things that we talk about when we're establishing an attack position. And in this case, you know, engine two, uh, the fire was quickly, you know, knocked down and, and for the most part extinguished. They were just checking for, checking for extension. Um, so then chief one pulls up and command wasn't ready to talk to chief one. Didn't have anything for chief one. Right. So he talked to the next company and put engine one, went level one, engine one, I'm putting you on deck alpha side. Engine one was a good order model, followed the process. He put rescue one, which in their system, um, assigned to medical on the alpha side and then circles back around. And, and, you know, chief one said, do you want me to take alpha? So, you know, there was th more than three companies assigned in a geographic area. 
the incident wasn't necessarily continuing to escalate, but the companies were there. Um, and, and really, this is a good incident to just practice all of the moving parts, pieces, and components of the system, right? And then you can have a conversation about it. Like, what does it really look like? It's, it's, though it's a, though it's a live event, it's a work and fire. It's, it's one of those where you can, uh, take some time, if you will, and exercise the system, uh, not under as much stress. So chief one gets assigned to alpha command, gives them a rundown of what companies he's got. And then chief one ends up there in alpha, uh, I think good communications, we could follow the process. Um, Chief One did come back as Alpha to command and ask what companies do I have? And, and you know, command came back and told them, these are the companies that you have working. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it's, a, it's a great example of the system at work. Great audio. You know, the, the other thing is, is I think at one point, Chief One as Alpha was having a little bit of difficulty communicating with one of the companies. And one of the advantages of being in the division is that face-to-face communication that you're able to do. And because of some of the noise they had going with the positive pressure fan and whatnot, it's like, hey, just do a face-to-face with me real quick. At a residential fire, you can do that. And that takes it not only off the radio, it makes it clearer while you still have the IC and a strategic command post that is capable of answering radio traffic right away, especially if there's a mayday. Well, let's keep it in Hernando County. I think this Hernando County traffic is uh, really good, especially for a new B-shift department, or B-shift, especially for a new blue card department. So what what, uh, are we going to listen to next? Yeah, so this next fire... um... It's a single story home. They pull up. Um, actually, the first the, com- the first company that's approaching actually calls out, uh, I think, a head- header on horizon or says something like that, which is a common thing in a lot of places because that just starts that upgrade. Right. And, you know, it- it's a flip. Right. I went to we've all been to plenty of fires and like you get called the what you what's dispatch is a building on fire and you pull up and it's a car on fire and it's like. Uh, well, it just got, it got upgraded, you know, whatever, but you can never call for them too early. So if you upgrade them and you get there and it's something else, then disregard them. But in this case, they called, uh, smoke on the horizon or how, I'm not sure exactly how, remember how he said it, but calls that out. Everybody knows they're going to a fire gets there, uh, good size up, uh, calls it defensive, you know, from, from the beginning, um, and as as it uh, as as we listen to the radio traffic, they get a pretty good command transfer. They get several companies there. It sounds like they get the fire knocked down. And in this case, uh, that one of the companies says to command, um, "We want to take a look inside and knock the fire down." And you know, if I'm just listening to this radio traffic, kind of the hair on my neck kind of raises up a little bit because it's like, "Ah, eh, what are we doing? We were defensive, but." You know, if you're there and you can see what's going on uh, and, and you talk to a couple companies and you're not going to where you were defensive, but you're going to operate in a different part of the building just to protect that space. You know, really, we could even define that as a defensive strategy still because we're protecting an exposure area. Right. I mean, um it all lines up with critical factors. Right. I mean, I could clearly be. Uh, defensive in one building and offensive in another building. Uh, when we talk about our residential sims, right, that happens. When we talk about some of the strip mall simulations that we have, I can be defensive in the main fire unit and offensive in an exposure because I'm in a separate space, right? Um, and that that involves a lot of decision making, you know, depending on exactly what is going on. So as you listen to this, I kind of wanted to load that up a little bit from the front because some people are going to maybe take that approach of what are they doing and i always say well if you're not there don't armchair quarterback you know anybody and in this case the ic talked to two different companies right and had good eyes on what was going on and uh you know gave the companies a shot to protect what was what what could still be saved even though half of it was already uh, a loss. They were trying to save what they could. Battalion 1, Battalion 2, Engine 4, Engine 11, Engine 12, Rescue 11, Rescue 4, 
Just respond on fire two for 8095 Morelli Avenue, zone 11, reference a residential fire. It's for responding on two. Responding. Okay, on two. On two. Battalion one is responding. Responding. Space five responding. Responding. All units, I should respond to 8095 Morelli Avenue, Cross Street, Sterling Street, and Country Club Drive. It's going to be for a residential fire. Originally started on the porch that's attached to the house. There's no one inside except for three cats. It's a single story. The fire is now in the living room and on the roof. T4 responding. Responding. Angela Hernando, column sighted. Happy column sighted. Rescue 11 is on scene. We got a mobile home. Uh, half involved on the A side. Copy on scene, mobile home, half involved on Alpha side. Engine 11, Hernando. Engine 11. Engine 11 is on scene. It's going to be a small mobile home, residential. We're going to have flames showing from Alpha, working fire. We're going to be stretching a line for fire attack, primary search to the Alpha side. Being the offensive strategy, be establishing Morelli Avenue command. Copy on scene, small mobile home residential. Flame showing from Alpha side, working fire, stretching line, Alpha side, offensive strategy, engine 11 command. Battalion 2, Hernando. Battalion 2. Battalion 2 is on scene. On scene. Command, Hernando. Command. 360 complete. There's going to be no hazards, no basement, no explosions in danger. Continuing an offensive strategy. And the accountability is going to be Alpha side, engine 11. Happy 360 complete, no hazards, no exposures. Chapter 4, Hernando. What could be my closest hydrant? Closest hydrant is at 8198 Country Club Drive. Time to command. Time to command. I understand you're going to be in the offensive strategy, stretching a line. For primary search and fire control, this is correct. Give me a can. That's correct. We have a uh, fire in the alpha side of the house. We're applying water at the time. Little effect. We need water supply. You're coming in unreadable. Time to the Hernando. Time two. Time two is going to assume command. We are changing to the defensive strategy. We've lost most of the structure, and it is continuing to burn through to the other side of the structure. Go ahead and continue to balance the alarm. Engine four, level one. Copy level one. Fernando copies all. Come in. And engine four. Engine four, go ahead, command. Catch a hydrant. Spot behind engine 11. Lay a line to them. Then pull a second line off engine 11 and assist with fire control. Engine four understands catching a hydrant. Laying a line to engine 11, pulling the second line off engine 11 to assist in fire control. Yeah, so again, this one, the dispatch, again, a fantastic job by dispatch, I think, right? I mean, where's the fire? Where did the fire start? Um, describe the building, captured information from, you know, the caller. Uh, we know fires that start outside of buildings, you know, end up in attic spaces, go to the roof, you know, very quickly, uh, spread, spread rapidly. So good information again by dispatch. Uh, Rescue 11 pulled up and just gave like a two, like two little words, uh, yeah, a mobile home and working fire. Right. And the engine was right behind them. So 
Engine 11 gave a great size up again. Reported as offensive, does a 360. Um, continues offensive, accountability location, um, where they were making the fire attack. And, and then the battalion pulled up. So, again, a super simple transfer because it's just one company, you know, was working at that point. Uh, so when the battalion got there, they said they were on scene and dispatch acknowledged it, but they didn't transfer command right away because in this case, they probably could see what engine 11 was doing and, and didn't want to delay the work that was taking place. Right. So that's another one of those pieces of, I got a second here and you can catch up your worksheet. Look at what, what look at the big picture, what's really going on so that, um, when you set in as the strategic IC, you're you're really ready to do that. So when they were ready, they keyed up and uh, you know got a good transfer from from command. Uh, the can report coming back wasn't great, but it, I heard some pieces of it. Right. So uh, when I say it wasn't great, it, it, it the firefighter talk on the mask sounded different on this one than on the first one. So command didn't hear all of it through. Um, but based on what they could see and what they heard, water having a little effect, you know, command made the decision right away. We're going defensive. So at that point, there was only, you know, one company there that was working. And in this case, that this is one of those cases, the strategic IC is looking at it from 30,000 feet. What's really going on here? Uh, we don't have a water supply established yet. This thing's well involved. I think he might have even said the majority of the building is 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 a loss or, or already lost, something like that. So, you know, sets it up for defensive, communicated that, that this is going to be a defensive fire. Um, and one of the inbound companies asked dispatch where the closest hydrant was, and she came right back and told them where the closest hydrant is, right? So that's just another one of those things. If you have that capability in your system that they can help support companies that are responding I mean, it's fantastic. And again, I'll just, I'll take it back to air traffic control, right? They, what can they do from a different position to help us do our job? Uh, so, so that whole front end thing, really good, set it up, start out offensive, went defensive, and then other companies are, are starting to arrive. So um, when engine four went level one, engine four got on a hydro, got, got an assignment, uh, get a water supply, take it to engine 11, and then get a second line off of engine 11 to assist them with fire control. So a really good task location and objective followed by an excellent use of the order model. Command gives an assignment using task location and objective. The company acknowledged the assignment again, using the order model. Um, and then, then the strategic IC can kind of check the box. Okay. I know that they got the assignment because they verified it back through using the order model and communicating to me that they that they understand what assigned piece of work that they have to do. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, the, that incident only happens that way because they practice it all the time on everything. Whether you got a pita, pot of meat smoking on the stove or you pull up and it's a defensive fire from the get-go, you use the same system all the time. And we evaluate critical fire ground factors and plug that into our incident action plan of what are we going to do about it? So what is the problem and what are we going to do about it? And when we see a, uh, a manufactured home, that's certainly a critical fire ground factor. We can't dismiss it because it's a smaller structure. Certainly firefighters have been killed and seriously injured in manufactured home fires. And, and they were they were looking at that building in that way, that this is going to be a fast moving fire. We know it's very lightweight construction. And uh, he made a pretty good determination right off the, the get go almost that we're not going to risk our lives for stuff that's already lost. I mean, this, this building is going to be a complete loss. So really good move there on that uh, defensive shift. Well, that's a great audio from Hernando County. I mean, salute to those guys and, and what they're doing with Blue Card. I can't wait to hear what they have going a year from now as they continue to grow and continue to develop the system within their jurisdiction and, and working with some of their partners and, and um, really letting this uh, blossom out and, and continue to grow their capabilities as incident commanders. Yeah, the John, they've, they've done great work and actually uh, – we're headed to Hernando County at the end of this month for a train the trainer class. So we got a few open seats left in that. If anybody was 
interested in attending that, they could reach out to the office or uh, myself, Josh at bshifter.com. Um, yeah, we'll be at, I think it's Hernando. We'll be in Hernando County. I think it's the last week of April is when we will be there, but it's listed on bshifter.com. You can see that class there. Excellent. Well, do you have anything else for the folks before we wrap it up today, Josh? No, uh, if you're going to be at FDIC, stop by and see us and uh, make sure you stay tuned to all the podca- podcast and uh, the buck slip that we all, you know, keep on working on and pushing out every single week, uh, getting tons of uh, getting tons of activity on that. And I think it's having a huge impact. So, um, John, really, this is your mojo, but. If you have something for the buck slip or something you want to talk about or a podcast or you want to get on a podcast, yeah, just reach out to us. And the B-Shifter buck slip is our weekly newsletter. You can sign up for it in the show notes. You don't have to be a Blue Card subscriber to get it. We welcome everyone to stay uh, in touch with us. Uh, it, it is for incident commanders and fire service leaders to give you the latest information every week, and it's absolutely free. All right, man. Well, I'll see you next week at FDIC. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, thanks for bringing us this audio today, Josh. Appreciate it. Sounds great, John. We'll talk to you soon.